I'm here uh, with uh, USA Today best-selling author John Land. Uh, he's a thriller writer, notably of the Caitlin Strong series uh, by Tor Forge. He's also a mystery writer, uh, five Murder, She Wrote books, and also an upcoming capital crime series book with Margaret Truman franchise, Murder on the Metro. He's also a screenwriter uh, with a great uh, 2005 comedy called Dirty Deeds, starring Milo Ventimiglia. Um, and finally, he's a board member for ITW, that's International Thriller Writers, a writing organization uh, with an annual event everyone should attend, that's Thriller Fest. So, Strong from the Heart, uh, it's the 11th book in the Caitlin Strong series. Um, uh, in this installment, Texas Ranger Caitlin Strong teams up with an outlaw who has every reason to want her dead in order to get the truth behind a killing on the Mexico border. Uh, so is this a classic thriller MacGuffin? a quest story, or do the unknowns behind the border killing lead it closer to the mystery genre? Well, all, all, uh, all thrillers are quest stories, but what I try to do with the Caitlin Strong is I blend a physical quest with an emotional quest. In this case, Strong from the Heart is very personal because it's about the opioid crisis. That's the backdrop. I try to always have a non-fictional backdrop for my fictional stories to lend them relevance and lend them uh, that, I hate the old cliche, rip from the headlines. I prefer to predict the headlines, but in this case, ripping them from the headlines with the opioid crisis. And the book actually jumps off from the, from the fact that Caitlin's, one of Caitlin's surrogate sons, who's a senior in high school, overdoses on Oxycontin. And he almost dies. And that sets Caitlin on the trail of who's behind the drugs. I'll, and, you know, obviously, when Caitlin Strong is on the trail, she's going to hunt you down and you're going to wish you never did what you did that set her on, your tra on the trail. But here's the thing that really made this book fun. And I actually didn't, I, I don't outline and I don't really, I let my characters dictate where the story is going. And maybe a third of the way through the book, I had a sense, maybe even as much as a halfway through the book, I had a sense that the emotional impact of the drugs was a little lacking. So I gave Caitlin a Vicodin problem. That's in, in Strong as Steel, which is in the background there, um, she suffers a traumatic brain injury, TBI, um, through a, an explosion. When you're too close to, a, to an explosion, the thing about thrillers when you or mysteries when you see them on television, people are around explosions, they just walk away. They get shot in the arm and they go, ouch. They get shot in the leg and they and they limp. You get shot in the leg, you may never walk again. You get shot in the arm, you may never use that arm again. Um, and and the, with a TBI, if you're too close to an explosion when the percussion goes off, you're, you could your your brain is rattling around your head. And it's kind of like a concussion, but it's worse. So she can't get over those symptoms. So she's taking Vicodin. And it's the only thing that makes her feel better. And as she gets more and more into this plot, more and more closer and closer, not only to the, to the forces behind the illegal distribution of drugs um, in Texas and the whole country, but also to something even more nefarious going on. All right. He realizes that she has a problem too. So that's where the personal element comes in. In general, your books have a lot of mystery and intrigue. Um, and so it, uh, you know, they're still thrillers, but here's kind of a, a general kind of almost thriller fest question for you. I love them. Um, how do you draw the line between mystery and thriller or is it even important? You know what, it's, it, it is and it isn't. It, it, it's important to understand the difference. It's not under, necessarily important to act upon it as long as people are loving your books and reading them and buying them <laughs> so you can make a living. Uh, I don't care. I don't, I'm not big into labels, but I will say this. A mystery is about trying to figure out who did what to whom. A thriller is about preventing something from doing a lot of damage to a lot more people than just one whom. Um, and also in a mystery, the hero's life is not necessarily in jeopardy. In a thriller, the stakes are higher because the hero's life is always in jeopardy. And, and that would be the, the easiest definition 
of what separates a mystery from a thriller. And now you raised the Murder, She Wrote books. I've done five in the Murder, She Wrote series. A sixth comes out in um, December. One of the things I've both been praised for and criticized for, same thing, um, is the fact that I never felt convinced that suspense is working if there isn't some threat to Jessica Fletcher. So Jessica Fletcher is not Caitlin Strong, but in every book I've done in the Murder, She Wrote series, her life is in danger. And that was the case in a number of the television series episodes of the great show on which the book series is purportedly based. I say purportedly because for the vast majority of the books that came before I took over, they're not anything like the TV series because the first writer, Don Bain, had never watched the TV series. Really? So he didn't know what he, he was just picking up a series um, based on a famous character. And he never, in my opinion, got Jessica Fletcher the way Angela Lansbury. To me, I wasn't writing Jessica Fletcher. I was writing Angela Lansbury playing Jessica Fletcher. The fun of writing Caitlin Strong is I don't know who's gonna play her eventually on television or in the films. So I don't have a, a, a firm picture in my head the way I did with Angela Lansbury. Another answer to your question, and there's a contrast there, since I write both mysteries and thrillers, many mysteries, maybe half, are written in first person. So you only have the POV of the, of the hero. You don't get to cut to subplots. You don't get to create a puzzle for the reader to put together in the same way you can in a thriller where the reader actually knows more than the hero because the reader sees the perspective, the POV of multiple characters and knows what they're thinking and knows what they're feeling. So let's, let's talk a little bit about uh, Caitlin Strong and, uh, and possible uh, TV film movie rights. What yeah. do you have in the works? Well, I got, I'm knocking on wood. I finally found a producer who, under, who first of all loves the series, loves the character and knows what he's doing. And the great thing, the, I've, look, Caitlin has been close before, but there's never been a package. All there's been is a, the books and the character. But this producer said, let's, let, let's not try to hit a home run, let's try to hit a grand slam. So um, being a screenwriter as well, I wrote the pilot, I wrote what's called the series Bible, which basically takes the first book in the series, Strong Enough to Die, and breaks it down into 12 episodes, 11 including the pilot, um, character sketches. And um, so we're much farther ahead of the game because we're not asking a buyer like Netflix to imagine what the series could be like. We're giving it to them. So I feel that it's always a crapshoot and the odds are always against you. But I think the odds are much better than they've ever been that we will see Caitlin likely on the small screen, not the big screen, but uh, who knows? Uh, so let know. me ask you to bring out your crystal ball uh, with um, maybe the, uh, the world changing yet again because of the uh, global Move pandemic. Uh, what, how will that affect thrillers? Uh, so I think you're gonna see books that are themed around the world becoming a more dangerous place. And I think there may be something, I think you may see a, the, the rise of, for a while anyway, I think you'll see a lot of books like The Andromeda Strain, which was the granddaddy of all pandemic books. Um, you know, I think we need to get away from it a little bit to know, um, but, because remember, Watergate didn't, didn't spawn books that were about Watergate or about Nixon and they didn't imagine a different Nixon. It was a, it was a different kind of thriller. It was about, um, love, it was conspiracies. So I think you're gonna see a lot of homegrown terrorism, um, which is nothing new. It's just new to the level we're experiencing. it. Well, that, that'll be interesting to see what happens with thrillers um, coming forward. Um, and that, that brings me to a question I have about Thriller Fest, where you are yeah. a board member. Um, so um, from your perspective as a board member, what's it all about? What does it do for writers? Uh, what's, what's the goal? That's a great question. And it's a fun one to answer. 
unlike other writers organizations, ITW, International Thriller Writers, were, was founded with a mandate where authors would, who had reached the top of the ladder or were approaching the top of the ladder or were even several rungs up would extend a hand down to help other, to lift other authors up. And I, I, no other organization has ever been chartered for that purpose. Um, and that's where the debut author program we had, was created, the mentoring program, um, the, any number of programs aimed at helping writers take whatever their next step may be. Whether anything from starting a manuscript to finishing a manuscript to marketing a manuscript to agents and publishers. We are about, we're, we're much more inclusive than any other organization. And we exist not only to support writers, you know, and, and to help them further their careers, but we also exist to promote our genre. For so long, thrillers were the bastard stepchild of the industry. You know, where do you find a Robert London book? You, you go to the mystery section because there was, there was no thriller section back in the 70s and 80s. So, and yet thrillers evolved into the most popular genre, but they didn't have their own space in the bookstore. Um, so we, ex we were founded, ITW was founded um, at a BoucherCon mystery convention in Toronto 12 years ago now, I'm sorry, 15 years ago now, specifically to create, to give the thriller genre an identity. And what we had that other organizations only wish they had was we had the biggest names in the industry wanting to do this. Lee Child was one of the charter members, Tess Garrison, Joe Finder, Steve Berry, James Rollins. These are all big best-selling authors who wanted to give back. Pay it forward. Great. Well, thanks, John. I think that's all the time we have, um, but uh, it's been a, a real pleasure having you, and uh, I look forward to talking to you again and having you on here uh, another time. This was great. And is strong for this? Are you going to turn that strong, strongest deal spine? Uh, you're going to you're going to turn that like? Is that going to go spine in when as soon as the yeah, there we go? As soon as the <laughs> interview is over? No, I'm just kidding. Oh, uh, it's going to go. It's going to stay right there. I like that. I like that. We got to make sure you, I send you strong from the heart. So it had, so strong as steel has a, has a brother. Yeah, absolutely. We're going to have to. We, 